Okay, so in this lab, we're focusing on in-maps, but not, not just basic in-map. We're going to try to get a little more in-depth. So first of all, let's go ahead and get our in-map started. And you'll see, first of all, that in-map has lots of settings, lots of things that we can do. I want to point out two specific ones, and that is SS and ST. So you start scrolling down. We can see what each of these do. So S and T separate could be time. If we're doing capital S, it could be source. So I mean, we do have to understand what our switches are doing. So let's go ahead and let's do in that. And I want to do a lowercase s and an uppercase t. And I want to scan my server. That way I can see, hopefully, what ports are open. So now that our st scan ran, that did ports. Let's try lowercase and uppercase s. Let's see what we can do with a stealth scan. And you'll notice our SS returned the same scan in about the same amount of time. The nice thing is we could also scan a range. So let's go ahead, our in map, and with hyphen p those will be the ports so i want to scan between ports 100 and 200 for example and that way it will scan just those port ranges so any of the 49 152 49 153 none of those should exist it should only be 135 and 139 we could, which we've already done as a basic command, but we could also scan the entire subnet range with a slash number. That way we'll find all hosts. And, and again, these scans do take some time. So if you're not getting them within seconds, I mean, that's pretty normal. All right, so now that we did scanning with a range, we have the option of scanning, but what happens when we want to mask our IP address? One of the problems is if we mask our IP address or if we spoof a different address, our responses may not come back to us. And so in InMap, we can spoof an IP address with a hyphen capital S, but what happens when we want to Offenscate our IP address, meaning we want to hide our IP address with other IP addresses. And we can do that with the hyphen capital D command. And so what we're going to do is we're going to scan that address and we're going to have three additional spoof addresses in there as well. But that way, they don't have to track down all of the addresses to figure out who the original one belongs to or which one is the real address. And again, the scans do take a few seconds, so we have to be patient. And there it goes. It took less than a minute, but it found our host and it found it also by including those three additional source addresses. Next, we have to talk about how to evade the firewall. So by default, most modern day routers will block or drop ICMP traffic. So that's an echo request or an echo reply, essentially ping. This is meant to obscure the presence of the host behind a firewall, basically protecting against the possible DOS attack using ping packets. So when you use in-map to scan a system or a network by default, 
They send it out a ping to see if the hosts are blocked or dropping. If so, Nmap gives up and says host is down. To get around this, to get around the firewalls and routers that block it, we need to suppress this Nmap's default behavior of sending out the initial ping and getting past the firewall. We do this by including a hyphen capital P zero switch. And that should allow us to bypass the initial ping request for our in-map. And that should do the scanning. It takes a little bit longer, but it will not send out ping requests. And after this is done, we're going to move I'll be moving into our version info. So again, notice that the time may have taken a little bit longer, but it did not send out the initial ping. So next is going to be our nmap hyphen capital V, and that's going to be version info. And V no longer works. We have to use hyphen lowercase s, uppercase V, and that will do version detection. This enables the version detection. Next, we're going to go on to UDP port scanning. Pretty similar to what we've done before in map, except this case, it's going to be lowercase s, uppercase U and our server. And I don't believe we have any UDP ports that are open, but we will find out. So our UDP scan is taking a while. It's already been going for several minutes, and it's only showing that it is a quarter of the way done. So our UDP scan is fairly slow, so be patient. So you'll see that with our UDP, it did find ports that were open, and it took over a thousand seconds to scan. So why did our previous scans only find TCP ports? So we can actually do the same scan. This time we're going to include a hyphen hyphen reason. And that will do the same scan over again, but this time provide a reason because there may not be uh, anything for the reasons. It could be a non-responsive port, it could be an unknown port. So there could be good reasons why we're finding these ports. So hyphen hyphen reason will let us find that out. So our reasoning for our scan, again, it's it does take time, so this you have to be patient with it. Okay, so our scan is now almost complete with our reasons. After we do our reasons, we only have a few more things to talk about. And there it goes. It took 1,065 seconds to generate our list. And you'll notice that all of these ports are showing non-responsive. Okay, so we have two more types of scans, and that's going to be using an automated list and then saving it as an output. So the first thing I want to do is let's do our present working directory, or PWD, and you'll notice they're in our root directory. So let's go ahead and let's create a Word document, and let's put in some addresses. So we have five addresses, all part of the 192.168.10 network. And we only have the third or the fourth octet that's different. And these three we know are up. These two are probably down. So let's go ahead and save this. We're going to save this in our root directory. And we're going to call this scan list.
Text.txt. Go back to our terminal. Let's do an ls to make sure. And we do not happen to see it here. All right, so let's minimize. Let's go find it. Here's our home directory. You'll see that it's not in our home directory. So I'm going to go to computer. Oh, and lo and behold, it's I saved it to computer instead of my home directory. So I'm going to copy it back to my home directory. And there we go. Scan list.txt. I'm going to do another ls just to make sure. And there we are. So what we can do is run this with an inmap hyphen i capital L scanlist.txt and it will read from that scan list and then report to the appropriate information. And we can see that it read from the list and it only found two hosts that were up. It even states it down here. Took 30 seconds to, or 32 seconds to run. All right, so next thing is what happens if we want to save output? Let's go ahead and do another silent scan on our server. This time we're going to do a lowercase o, capital N, and we want to call this portscan.txt. What will happen is it will do the scan and it will put the uh, information as an output to that text. And that will be saved in our present working directory. So let's go ahead and let's double check where it's at. Oh, there it is. There is our port scan text. Now, how can we read our port scan text? Present working directory. Shows that we're in our home directory. Let's do an ls. Do we see our port scan text? Yes, we do. So we can type cat port scan.txt and the cat will allow us to view the text inside. And that's actually it for this quick overview of InMap. I want to thank you and hope you guys have a great day.